Hello, and welcome to Rob's Newsroom. There was outrage this week over the mistreatment of Amazon employees. While I do appreciate their low pricing, I'm getting sick of having books with this inside. Speaking of books, Dick Cheney just came out with a new book this week titled American Exceptionalism, Why the World Needs a Powerful America. And even if that was true, you never win people over by being that arrogant. It's like if Albert Einstein walked up to me in a party and said, I'm the greatest thing in the world, I would think I hate Albert Einstein. I hope his theories turn out to be relatively useless. Next up, a man was fired this week after accidentally sending an explicit picture of his junk to his new employer. You laugh, but in fact, one out of every 10 sexters has sent a dirty photograph to the wrong person. I'd like to offer the simple solution to this problem of not taking pictures of your dick. Which brings us to our next issue, immigration reform. Republicans are saying that we need to get rid of the Mexicans who snuck into this country. And to me, that's crazy talk. Research shows that those are the best Mexicans. They're hardworking, they're risk takers. What they're saying is we need to get rid of these people and then replace them with Mexicans who come through the proper channels. Coming through the proper channels requires both patience and being good at paperwork. Those are people who will take our office jobs. Those are the Mexicans we gotta keep in Mexico. In fact, I'm thinking what we should do is build a wall, make the policy, if you can sneak past it, you can stay. Then we'll fund it by filming the border. It'll be Survivor Meets Wipeout series. Interestingly enough, Syrian refugees have been welcomed into Germany, and I never thought we'd get to a point in world history where the Germans are nicer than us. With college debt now exceeding $1 trillion, they're calling it a potential debt bubble. And while bubbles might be fun for little kids, when this one pops, it'll be a real sticky mess. Here to comment on college affordability is Bernie Sanders. Hello, my name is Bernie Sanders, and I'm trying to get more free stuff for the American people. Why is it that 1% of the population has 90% of the wealth, and that I only understand 50% of the statistics that come out of my mouth? Also, there's a problem that there's over a year till the general election, and I've already used all the relevant statistics that I have for it. Lastly, I think we should make college free. There's a problem in this country that I know smart kids who are working out of their parents' basement for no money. Excellent points by Bernie Sanders. Now, we need to discuss why college debt is growing as fast as the pile of unarmed civilians shot by police officers. There's $1.2 trillion of student debt. The average student graduates owing $27,000. This year's graduating class is the most in debt ever, which might also make them the most American. The U.S. economy is driven by consumer spending, and starting out their lives in debt, these kids are true patriots. However, critics are claiming that student debt strikes at the core of American values. For starters, students are delaying marriage. And if college debt is what's getting women to go on Tinder instead of starting a family, it sounds to me like we need to make college more expensive. They're also saying that recent graduates aren't starting businesses. But seeing as how 80% of those don't work out anyways, college debt is just the cheaper way to experience failure. You can realize that hard work and debt sucks. McDonald's will be forced to pay me $15 an hour. Obama's offering subsidized health care. Why would I work hard? In fact, we may be approaching humanity's greatest moment for lazy people. Like the moon landing, I hope to plant a flag into the stomach of a fat guy to celebrate. Lastly, they're saying that college graduates aren't buying homes, but I prefer to rent, you can piss in the sink. Now let's discuss the oppressive nature of this act. Let's have a tin hat theory moment. College can be expensive. Just ask my parents who paid for six years of it. And as kids couldn't afford it, government stepped in and said, I'll save you. Problem is that a recent New York Fed study found that for every new dollar a college receives in direct subsidized loans, a school raises its price by 65 cents. The price of a year of college has increased by more than 1200% over the last 20 years, four times the increase in the consumer price index. I don't know what that means either, but the average price of the degree at a private school is now $136,000, which is a lot of money to spend to get drunk and play video games. But not only did federal loans drive up student debt, the government profits off these loans. They make $12.5 billion a year. If someone else tried running the scam, politicians would scream, you're ruining the economy, you're exploiting the youth, you're driving up education costs. But instead, government's doing this and pretending like they are helping us. Kind of makes me respect the government, perhaps they do know what they're doing. Now, most of the profits come from grad students and good. Make those cocky doctors and lawyers rethink trying to work so hard. I mean, paying interest to the governments that you can earn and pay more taxes later, how's that for freedom, you bozos? In fact, I don't trust doctors anymore. They're the only ones dumb enough to work for a living. In student debt, it's particularly harsh. It's hard to get rid of in bankruptcy court. 
The government can withhold wages and tax returns. Two states will even revoke your driver's license for unpaid college loans. Having your license revoked is a bit like an adult timeout. Instead of going to work, the government wants you to sit at home and think about all the money you owe them. Now, as the national debt continues to swell like the limbs of a diabetic, it's becoming a big talking point in the upcoming election. Millennials are a voting block now, and politicians will have to throw benefits our way if they want our votes. Watch out, aging baby boomers. We're coming for your tuna fish sandwiches. Hillary Clinton plans to increase government spending by $350 billion over 10 years to address the issue. Bernie Sanders, like most things, believes colleges should be free. He's just such a Jew. Why should we have to pay money for this? As for Republicans, they have too many candidates for me to tell you what they plan on doing. Yet, if I had to guess, they're probably not even aware of the situation. After all, college kids are neither wealthy nor someone you go to war with, so why would they care? But after all the information we just saw, turns out the whole crisis is overstated. In fact, I'm here to tell you that the last three minutes have been a complete waste of your time. College is still a value. Despite the $27,000 debt price tag, college grads have an upward earning potential of a million dollars to those who don't go. Monthly payments are actually down. Only 3.5% of graduates with a bachelor's or associate's degree default on their loans. The people who are defaulting on the loans are people who didn't finish college. They mostly have small loans under $2,000, and studies show that some of these people don't even know they took out the money. In which case, I fault the government for lending money to the dumbest people on the planet. That's kind of on you. Like, if I lend money to a lizard, I shouldn't be able to get upset when it doesn't pay me back. Like, hey, that lizard owes me money. So is college debt a problem? Well, our economy needs spenders, and people with debt spend less. But luckily, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hey, Rob. With an anvil. Moving up.